In the previous portion of this series of videos, we learned the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. And we learned how we could use the mnemonic SOKOTOA to help remember the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. Now we're ready to move on to our next topic. However, you should not move on to the ne next topic until you've mastered that previous topic. So if you still feel even a little bit shaky about the basic definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent, you should go back and redo the previous portion of the videos. Go back and redo the previous portion of the videos if you need to. Don't move on into this new topic uh, unless you feel you've really mastered the material that we've already gone over. So let's go on to our next topic. Well, again, what we've learned how to do now is we've just learned what the definitions are of sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, but we haven't learned why sine, cosine, and tangent are useful. We haven't learned how to use the sine, cosine, and tangent. Well, that's our next step. Uh, in this portion of the videos, we're going to learn how we can use the sine, cosine, and tangent to figure stuff out about a triangle. How can we use the trigonometric functions sine, cosine, and tangent to figure things out about a triangle? There's two different situations that we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss one situation where we're told one of the angles and one of the sides of the triangle. We're going to discuss a situation where we are, where we are told or given one of the angles and one of the sides of the triangle. And then our job will be to use trigonometry to figure out everything else about the triangle, to figure out the other angles and the other sides. It turns out that if you know one angle and one side of a right triangle, you can figure out all the other angles and all the other sides using tri trigonometry. The other situation we're going to deal with is where we're given two sides. Two sides and no angles. If you're given two sides of a right triangle, then again, you can figure out everything else about that triangle. It turns out that if you're given two sides of a right triangle, you can figure out all the angles and um, all of the sides using trigonometry. So these are the, these are the two types of situations that we're going to deal with. And these are both situations that come up a lot in physics. So it's very important in physics not just to be able to do these problems, but these types of problems are supposed to be boringly easy. Uh, unless we can get to the point where these types of problems are boringly easy, our physics problems are going to take us way too long. So we really have to uh, aspire to really master this material. All right, these are the two situations we're going to deal with. We're going to start with this situation. We're going to look at problems where we're given one angle and one side, and we're going to see that we can figure out everything else about that triangle. And then after we've learned about this type of material, we'll go on and learn about this type of material. Here's a right triangle, and notice that I've given you one of the sides and one of the angles. I told you this side, which is 5, and this angle, which is 30 degrees. Uh, and now your job is to figure out everything else about this triangle. I'd like you to try to figure out all the other sides and all the other angles. So you can pause the video and give that a shot. Uh, but don't get frustrated if you get stuck, because we haven't really gone over the method for this yet. So give this a shot, but if you get stuck, just proceed with the videos, and we'll see how to do this type of problem. But we should be able to now figure out from this information, we should be able to figure out all the other sides and all the other angles of this triangle. Now in this problem, uh, we want to focus on figuring out new information from the information that we were given. Uh, so I'm going to use asterisks to help me remember what information we were given. We were given this 30 degrees, and we were given that this side was 5. I'm going to put those asterisks in there to remind myself that those, that was the information that I was given. And we're supposed to figure out everything else. Now actually there's one thing we don't really have to figure out. We already know that this angle is 90 degrees, or it wouldn't be a right triangle. So we weren't really just given one angle, we were also given the right angle uh, as well. Uh, but anytime you have a right triangle, of course you know that one of the angles is 90. So what I mean is that we're given one angle in addition to the right angle. Now the easiest thing here should have been to figure out the last angle. It should have been very easy to figure out this angle. I think we reviewed this type of problem earlier. Uh, remember that um, since this angle is 90, the remaining two angles have to also add up to 90. In a right triangle, since the right angle is 90, the remaining two angles also have to add up to 90. So this angle up here must be 90 minus 30, which is 60. And you can check 60 plus 30 is 90 degrees. 
So the calculation we did to find this angle was 90 minus 30. That gave us 60. Uh, we know that in a right triangle, one of the angles is 90, and the other two angles also add up to 90. That way, the total sum of all the angles is 180, as it is in any triangle. All right, so it wasn't very hard to find this one remaining angle. Uh, and it'll take a little more work to find the sides. I'm going to write down Sokotoa so we don't forget that key idea. Now, in order to use trigonometry, we need to label which sides are the hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. Well, clearly this side um, with the asterisk with the length of 5 is the hypotenuse because it's opposite to the 90 degree angle. But which side should be adjacent and which side should be the opposite? Well, that depends on which angle we're focusing on. Are we going to focus on the 30 degree angle or the 60 degree angle? Well, at this point, we can focus on whichever angle we want. We can focus on either the 30 or the 60. However, what people usually do in physics is they usually focus on the angle they were originally given. Remember, the 60 is something we weren't given. That's something that we figured out. The number we were given was the 30. I put this asterisk here to remind myself that that was the number I was originally given. Um, so let's follow what the usual convention is in physics. Usually people like to figure stuff out based on the original givens in the situation. So we're going to still keep focusing on this 30 degree angle. Uh, it's perfectly fine if you want to focus on the 60 degree angle. That's just not the way it's usually done in physics. All right, now, um, so let's label the opposite and the adjacent sides. Well, since we're focusing on this angle with the asterisk, this side would be adjacent, and this vertical side is opposite to the asterisk. Of course, the opposite and adjacent sides would be different if we decided to focus on the 60 degrees, but we decided to focus on the 30 degrees. Very helpful to put in this asterisk so that you can remember which angle you're focusing on. I encourage you to imitate this notation if these problems give you difficulty. Now, should we be using here sine, cosine, or tangent? Well, remember that we're going to try to use this number 5 to figure other things out. We're going to try to use the number 5 to figure other things out. This asterisk re reminds us that we're using the 5 to figure things out. Um, so it only makes sense to use trigonometric functions that involve the hypotenuse. It only makes sense on this problem to use trigonometric functions that involve the hypotenuse. Because uh, otherwise, if it's not involving the hypotenuse, we won't get a chance to use this number 5. So in particular, it doesn't make sense here to try to use the tangent. There's no point trying to use the tangent uh, because then we wouldn't be able to use our number 5. Remember that the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. The tangent doesn't even refer to the hypotenuse. How can we expect to figure something out if we're not using the information that we're given? But just to make that clear, suppose that we wrote down the tangent of 30. Well, the tangent of 30 would be the opposite side over the adjacent side. But we don't know what the opposite side is, and we don't know what the adjacent side is. So this equation is useless. This equation is useless because we don't know either of these two things. Notice that what we, what we need is we need to find an, a way that we can write an equation that we can plug this 5 into. Well, we can't plug the 5 into this equation because the 5 refers to the hypotenuse. So the tangent is not going to be a, a useful function for us here. On the other hand, the sine involves the hypotenuse, and the cosine also involves the hypotenuse. So those both look like they're going to be useful, because we know what the hypotenuse is. All right, I'm going to start with the cosine here. If you want, you can start with the sine. Cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 degrees. Uh, remember that we generally want to write the general formula first. Well, co cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Keep using Sokotoa to remind yourself of the definitions of the trig functions. Cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's what co stands for. Now, what number should I plug in for the adjacent side? Well, I can't plug in any number for the adjacent side because we don't know what the adjacent side is. So I just have to keep writing that out as a variable, ADJ for adjacent. But can I plug a number in for the hypotenuse? Well, yes, we were given that the hypotenuse had a length of 5. So here we see why it was a good idea to use the cosine because the cosine involves the hypotenuse and we know something about the hypotenuse. So we can plug in that the hypotenuse here was 5. Well, now we're actually in pretty good shape 
um, because we've got one equation and one unknown. Here's our equation and we have an unknown, which is the adjacent sign. I hope you know enough algebra to know that if you have one equation and one unknown, you can rearrange the equation and solve for that unknown.